Hi, I'm Gil with Master Tool Repair. Today we're going to talk about nail guns and how they work and the different parts inside of them. This is a nail gun that's very similar to the Hitachi style. So we're going to talk about this one. We've disassembled the gun and this is the body of the nailer here. You'll see that in the very bottom of it, it has a plastic bumper. Inside, this is where the driver actually goes down. This is the driver blade and the piston assembly actually goes down and so it doesn't hit metal. It actually has a rubber bumper on the very bottom to protect it from bottoming out. The driver blade, which actually drives the nail, basically is like a half moon shape to be able to grab the next nail. It's got a standard piston with an o-ring around it. This is an oiled nailer. This one requires some oil. Inside um, the cavity of the gun, there are different ports. And as you can see right through here, where the trigger assembly is, when you depress the trigger assembly, a couple different things happen in a nail gun. With the Hitachi style, it uses a very unique style of um, firing. As you can see in the bottom of this, there's a big spring. The big spring, what happens is there is uh, air pressure that keeps this pushed up to the very cap. As you can see, this is the cap. And what happens is this rubber piece right here, it seats on there and it seals the air from going inside. But when you press the trigger, what happens is the air that's surrounding the cylinder drops off. And that air actually goes through these two little ports on the side, causes an increase of air pressure um, on the top, and this actually slides down so that the air can go inside. Once the air goes inside, it pushes the actual piston and the driver blade down, catches the nail, and runs it into your piece of wood. And then after it's done that cycle, it comes back up and seals again against the cap. This is a very, very efficient design um, of nailer. It doesn't require a head valve inside, where typically the head valve inside, like on a Bossish or any other nailers that have head valves in the top, this would move back and forth. Um, and the air would go into the cylinder, and the cylinder would actually stay uh, static. It wouldn't move at all. Um, obviously, this is the magazine that holds the nails holds it at the proper angle to be able to fire the nails. You have your feeder. The feeder actually pushes the nails, the rack of nails, towards the nose of the gun. And this spring right here is a ribbon spring. The ribbon spring, as you can see, simply puts tension on this. And a lot of times, this will break and snap. If it does, this ribbon spring has to be replaced. It's not a very expensive part. Um, but the magazine, for the most part, is made of steel. Sometimes they're made of uh, aluminum. This one's made of steel. This is the nose of the gun. Uh, the nose is a very expensive part typically, so you don't want to get this damaged or break this because you've got a lot of money tied up in this. They'll usually have a safety mechanism so to where you have to depress the, um, the workpiece against the nailer for it to be able to allow you to pull the trigger. Okay, that's most part of what we're talking about with the, with the framing nailer or a trim nailer uh, for the most part, but this is Hitachi's design and that's a very popular one. The exhaust, once the air goes in um, and it comes back out, it exhausts at the very top port of this nailer. Typically what goes wrong with these Hitachi nailers is not a whole lot. It's typically O-rings because this moves back and forth. You've got several O-rings here. This big rubber band, it's not a rubber band, it's actually an exhaust valve. When the air goes inside and it comes back in cycles, this rubber band expands and it allows the air to go inside so this will shove the cylinder back against the top cap. That's the reason for that. It's sort of like a check valve. That can break from time to time. This spring in the bottom typically doesn't break. Uh, what you'll have is you'll have O-rings inside your trigger valve assembly. They'll wear out because they're being depressed. So any O-ring that is going to have dynamic movement on it is typically going to wear out first. So with these Hitachi nailers, you're looking at an O-ring kit. And the O-ring kit, you're going to need to get a gasket. One gasket for the very top 
that gasket's going to seal the cap against the body of the nailer. And when it does, when you pull this off, it's going to tear. Don't try to save the gasket and be cheap and not get another gasket. You're going to need a gasket. So get that one. So the most popular parts for the nailers, especially these type of nailers, are going to be an O-ring kit, a feeder spring, uh, possibly this little check valve, the gasket as I said, and then the O-rings that are inside the uh, trigger assembly. That's for the most part. Now every now and then you're going to see that the bumper in the bottom is going to start to crack. You don't want that to break. This is the actual bumper. If it starts to crack and break, it could bottom out and you can mess up a driver. So you want to make sure that's in good shape. But they're pretty easy to rebuild. All you need to do is make sure that you use a good O-ring grease. Uh, when you lube up the O-rings, put the O-ring grease on the O-rings before you put them on the nailer. Don't put the O-rings on the nailer and then coat the outside. The entire O-ring has got to be um, coated. So make sure you do that. Uh, when you take your nailer apart to be able to put new O-rings in it, it's best to go ahead and clean this out. Do not clean it with gasoline. Do not clean it with kerosene or diesel fuel. Use a good parts washing fluid that you would use for like cleaning out a car or whatever. Um, I know with roofing nailers, a lot of times the guys get tar in the very, very tip of the nailer. And if that's the case, you have to get that off the petroleum substance, but don't let it go inside the gun. But the biggest thing to be able to keep these things running um, and working smoothly is to lubricate them and what you want to do is put two or three drops of nailer oil into the back of the where the hose fitting is. If you're using it all day long, do it in the morning and do it at lunch. If you do that, this thing will last you a good long time and you won't need to replace the O-rings as often. So hopefully that explains a little bit about nailers, especially the Hitachi style nailer, how it works, and the common parts. Thanks, I'll see you again.